This case is a 67-year-old woman who initially presented with a painless lump in her neck. Her past medical history was unremarkable. She was seen by her primary care physician who noticed a palpable, non-tender, solitary, right of the midline neck mass, and the physical exam was otherwise unremarkable. Laboratories were ordered, and these included a TSH and antithyroglobulin antibodies that were within normal limits, and an ultrasound of the neck was performed as well. This showed a suspicious 3.6 centimeter mass arising from the right lobe of the thyroid, and three suspicious right supraclavicular masses, the largest of which was two centimeters in size. An ultrasound guided fine needle aspiration was done of the large thyroid mass, as well as the largest lymph node in the right supraclavicular neck. Both of these showed papillary thyroid carcinoma. The patient then was referred to surgery and underwent a total thyroidectomy with central compartment dissection, as well as right selective neck dissection. And pathology from that showed a 3.6 centimeter papillary thyroid carcinoma rising from the right lobe of the thyroid with tall cell features. There was extra thyroidal extension that was present and two of six uh, central compartment nodes were involved, the largest of which was 1.6 centimeters and there was no extra nodal extension. And three of 13 right lateral compartment nodes were involved, the largest of which was two centimeters and extra nodal extension was noted in that specimen. So therefore she had a stage T2 N1 MX papillary thyroid carcinoma. The patient had an excellent performance status with an ECOG performance status of zero. Following surgery, the patient was referred to endocrinology and she was given an empiric dose of radioactive iodine, 150 millicuries. The whole body scan following the administration of the radioactive iodine showed uptake in the neck only thought most consistent with thyroid, a thyroid remnant. She then uh, entered a follow-up and in follow-up at six months, the TSH was suppressed appropriately at 0 0.1 and the thyroid globulin level measured 24. The patient then had a neck ultrasound that was unremarkable and a CAT scan of the chest. This showed uh, a number of uh, uh, bilateral lung nodules approximately 10, the largest of which was 1.1 centimeters. She had no treatment at that time, however, remained in active surveillance and had repeat neck and chest CT scan three months later. At that point, there was minimal growth in several of the lung nodules, one to two millimeters. However, there were also two new distinct eight millimeter lung nodules. The thyroglobulin level was increased at that time as well. Treatment with Lenvatinib at 24 milligrams a day was initiated. In terms of the prognosis for this patient, patients who have iodine refractory uh, differentiated thyroid cancer do live for a number of years. We know from um, a review of the patient population by Duranti that was published in 2006 that the 10 year survival for this patient population is only 10%. However, many patients do live for a number of years with this diagnosis. The median overall survival for these patients um, in the Duranti series was less than five years. What we don't have great data on at this point is in the era of treatment with MKI therapy, exactly what the median overall survival is because we don't have long-term follow-up from patients that have been enrolled in the modern era of MKI therapies but I think that it's safe to say that from the time of in initial diagnosis of radioiodine refractory uh, DTC with treatment, we're seeing median survivals well longer than five years at this point for most, in most patients, I think. 